Hi YouTube, today on Roy Marco's Garage, we're putting the cheapest injector you can buy on Amazon in this Dodge Cummins to see if it fixes the problem with the number one injector. And come along for the ride. So what we're going to do, I'm going to show you the trouble code that we have. How we determine it's the number one injector. We got an injector to go in and see if it makes it run any better. So let's see how it is. This we turn the key in the on position. Okay, as you can see, we got five codes here. So we're just going to go OK. Read the codes, stored codes. Okay, uh, ECM, PCM, processor, injector circuit, open cylinder one, PCM low, uh, input signal low, crankshaft position, camshaft position, correlation bank one, sensor A, fuel injector group A, supply voltage circuit open, ECM, PCM processor. So uh, it's saying number one cylinder here, and I'm from what I understand, uh, a lot of these other codes are because of that. So uh, let's just uh, change that number one and we'll clear the codes and see what happens. Okay, so to be able to do this job, here's the number one injector. We probably have to pull this uh, tube off. But the first thing I'm going to do is pull off the valve cover. There's six bolts, two are underneath there. So uh, since I'm holding the camera, I can't do both. I'll set up the tripod the best I can and get this to you. These bolts are 10 millimeter. I'm gonna get an air hose and blow all this off so it doesn't go inside. You're gonna watch this valve cover gasket, it has all the wiring in it. So you gotta make sure the cover comes off, leaving the gasket behind. Just like that. Gross. So this is the injector here that we got to pull out and replace. I don't work on a lot of diesel trucks. This is the second time I'm doing an injector. The first time I did all six on a guy's truck, I put rebuilt Bosch in. My truck ran just beautiful after the guy said he's never had it run that good. He bought the truck used. This one here, I, like, yeah, it's pretty, like the oil changes, yeah, they, they don't get done. I mean, this is uh, not good maintenance, but I'm not here to do that. I'm here to do an injector. So uh, the next thing I do is uh, there's a common rail on this truck, so we have to take off this number one line and see if I can do anything about this inlet tube without having to pull this. If I have to pull this off, then I got to pull this off. So it's got to crack this loose with a 19 millimeter. I do the other end and see if I can get this tube off. Okay, I got the number one fuel line out. A couple things I gotta do is take off this uh, exhaust rocker as well as this tube. I'm gonna try and get this tube out first to see what I have to take out. So. This is a 20. Uh, this actually is 50, well, it's metric too, but 15 16 This is a wrench we modified to be able to do the, the number six uh, injector, which is the one at the far back by the engine lift. Okay, so uh, we take off this nut here. Okay, so that nut is definitely hitting this. You have to pull this off to change the number one injector. So that'll be the next thing I do. I gotta undo the dipstick, undo four bolts. Uh, there's a hose here, can undo the clamp, and then get this out of the way so we can get this uh, injector to feed tube out. Okay, so I loosen this off. Instead of taking it all out of here, I just push it back a little bit. That allows me to get this out. Let's see if we can get out our, uh, 
our feed tube. Injector feed tube, you just have to get in there. A little bit of a pull. It just pops out. Okay, so with both hands, a little bit of manipulation, I was able to get this feed tube out without taking uh, the, uh, this is your uh, glow, it's like a heat plate. Instead of uh, glow plugs, it's a heat plate that heats up the incoming air to, to warm up the air coming in to start it when it's cold. And so I was able to get that out without uh, having to like take all this out of here and uh, didn't have to undo this clamp so or the electrical connections on the other side. So now uh, the next uh, job we have to undo is take off the bolt here and take off this rocker and take out our two bolts get the injector out as well as the two electrical connectors. Okay so this is also a 10 mil. Take off the exhaust rocker. Okay, now you gotta be careful when you're taking this off. There's a little uh, cap on the end. There's like a little rocker here. It goes on two valves. Okay. And also that little thing here. So let me just get that over here before I lose a piece over here. This little rocker arm, you can keep it on the top of the valves. Because the 24 valve, there's two valves for each exhaust. Two valves for each intake. So make sure that rocker's on there. This little cap is on the end, on the ball, on the rocker and the bolt. And you don't have to turn the engine over on this. The bolt is long enough. No matter what position the rocker's in, when you put that in place and tighten it down, it's not like you're going to rip out threads or anything like that. You actually have to take this valve cover gasket off. So I'm going to undo some of them. Oh, look at this. You think that could be why his injector's not working? Look at that. Electrical connection built clean off. So, yeah, that's right there. So anyway, uh, I'll have to figure out how to get that out of there. Oh, it's not even, it's not even inside the nut. I hope the nut's okay. Cause yeah, to buy this gasket is like uh, 300 and something dollars just for this gasket because it has all the wiring in it. So hopefully that nut's okay. So anyway, I'll work on getting this off so we can get this injector out and uh, maybe I can just work around it. We'll see what happens here. So I found if I pull off the first three, uh, sets of wires I can lift this up enough I can kind of lift the gasket up enough get that bolt undone to get the injector out so uh, I'll try and pull this out of here I know if you're probably a 59 expert you're probably laughing at me right about now going what is this guy doing there we go okay. I know one thing you want to note when you're pulling these injectors out is to make sure that this washer is on here and you can see how bad the end of that is we'll take this over to the bench and I'll compare it to the new one and I'll show you okay so here's the injector feed tube that's in pretty good shape uh, on the end there's no uh, nicking or marking so that's okay this can be reused uh, if you had to buy one of these they're like 50 bucks um, anyway I'm just gonna put that aside and show you the injectors so yeah, the injector basically uh, has a feed tube. It goes in like this, and then the fuel feeds into the injector. So it's important that these surfaces are good. Um, and that's when we put it back together, there's a certain sequence on how you're supposed to check that. So we'll go through that. This is the old injector, as you can see. It is just caked with uh, stuff on the, on the tip there. Then I'll show you the new injector. So here's the new injector here looks like the old one but everything is nice on it shiny new uh, this is a uh, o-ring here we have to lubricate that before we put it in uh, here's uh, like a little spring clip that you hear click when you push it down and this is on like a rocker okay so this is actually on it's a good thing I looked at this this is a brand new injector and this rocker is on upside down I have to flip that around it's not supposed to go on flat like that it has to have the the tipping point in the middle the fulcrum point there so this has to be changed so I've never taken one of these apart but I'm guessing the o-ring has to come off the spring clip 
and then that should allow all of this to come off the end and be flipped around and put back together. So uh, I'm going to have to do that. It's supposed to be like this here, where uh, it tightens down and pushes right down into the middle of that. So this is on backwards right from, so this is a cheap injector and right off the bat uh, there's a problem with the, uh, the assembly of this injector. So if you don't know that, you put it together, I'm not sure what the consequence will be, but uh, it may not uh, push down correctly, may not seat right, so I have to change that around. So keep your eye out when you buy an injector that that's uh, facing the correct direction, because that's on backwards. Clipping the O-ring off, and so yeah, just like I thought, you can slide this over here. Okay, now we can slide this rocker piece off and flip it around, install it in the correct fashion. This uh, collar has a little lip that, little lip you see in there, okay? The other side's flat, the flat side goes up like that. Okay, anyway, put our little clip on and then our ring back on. Okay, now the injector is completely reassembled uh, the correct way, so we can now go put it in the truck. So, a new injector in place here. I lubed up the o ring, and what you do is you get everything in place. Then you push down on it firmly, that should click, just like that. Put your bolts in. Now you don't want to tighten down one side completely because it's on a rocker. Small problem here is that I don't have a, an inch pound torque wrench. 44 inch pounds is a pre-torque, then you back it off, Tighten up your uh, side tube into as uh, your feed tube. You put like 11 foot pounds on it, then you tighten your injector down all the way to 89 inch pounds. Then you uh, tighten up your, uh, your nut on your feed tube to 44 foot pounds. So what I'm going to do is uh, the inch pound stuff, I'm just going to have to use 20 years of experience, and that's what it's going to have to be. So let's do it. So I'll just imagine this is my torque wrench here at 44 inch pounds. Click, 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 all right, good. Now, I'm gonna back it off just a little bit, okay? Now, we put in our uh, feed tube on the side. There's these two little uh, balls here. They go straight up and down, and you'll feel it kinda, you can turn it and it clicks in. Then I lube up the O-ring. That's out of the way. You can see, you got here, there's the two uh, balls. They go up here like this, and you can kind of rotate, feel it locks in, and it should lock into place. So you got it like that. There, if you actually hear that click, it's in place. Now we put our jam nut on, and tighten that down to 11 foot pounds. Okay, I put a little bit of um, copper coat on there. Uh, I like them to be lubricated so you get the correct torque. There's that 11. Okay. Now 89 inch pounds divided by 12 is like 7 foot pounds. My torque wrench doesn't quite go that low. Anyway, 89 inch pounds is where you want to be. I don't have the torque wrench, so. in there from experience 44 foot pounds okay if you do knock this off the one with the dot goes to the furthest valve out and then you get your rocker on here Put on our wiring. We're gonna wire up all of these with the 8 mil. Uh, make sure all those are on, and then we can put our valve cover back on. Now 
Now, before I put my rocket cover on, I'm just going to bolt this back up. We can put our uh, fuel rail on or valve cover, so uh, let's put our fuel rail on. Okay, we got those run up. Just got to get the wrench on them. Okay. You got to be careful when you're putting this on. You don't catch the bolts on any of the wiring inside that cover. You kind of have to stay up a little bit. You kind of get them up. Okay. You don't have to over tighten these. Gotta get a different tool for back there. Injectors in, everything's back together. Let's see how it starts. Sounds pretty good now that it's warmed up. Um, yeah, no fuel leaks, everything's back together. Uh, wasn't too big of a job, really. Um, once you're in there, I mean, you know, once you got all the tools out, you could do all six injectors, it's not too bad, but uh, in this case, you just want to do one injector. I was trying to talk him into do all six, but uh, anyway, let's just do the one. So, uh, there it is. Anyway, uh, if you like this kind of stuff, please subscribe, you know, ring that bell for notifications and have a great day.